Alright guys, so it looks like it's about time Tesla is going to be releasing their Magic Dock CCS connector. Now you guys have probably already heard Tesla released CCS connectors for the European market, at least for a select few countries, and it's been working pretty well. They're starting to earn revenue for non-Tesla EVs charging on the supercharging network, and that's been working very well, and they've promised that they are going to be bringing that to the North American market by the end of 2022. Well, that really hasn't happened and there's probably a good reason for the delays. There's a lot of chip shortages. And then on top of that, the recession right now with large tech companies firing employees, that's probably not helping things. But here we are finally getting our first preview of the new Magic Dock connectors for the superchargers. It seems like Tesla either accidentally or purposely leaked this information on their supercharging website showing you guys exactly which and where this new CCS supercharger is going to be located. And then on top of that, they even leaked the design and how it's going to look like on their mobile app. Now before we even talk about the leaked Tesla superchargers, let's talk about the network and how it's going to be beneficial to non-Tesla EV owners and how it's going to be bad for Tesla owners out there. So now, if you guys are Tesla owners, you guys already know about the supercharging network, how it's so great, how you can just come there, plug it in, and everything is good to go. Everything has been working pretty well, but now the thing that's happening is that long wait times are increasing, and that means that people are getting pretty upset, and the fact that they are adding on non-Tesla EVs out there, they're gonna make the wait time even longer. Now, of course, this is gonna be beneficial for Tesla revenue overall, so if you guys are a Tesla stock owner, you're gonna be really happy about this, but if you guys are a Tesla owner, you guys are gonna be pretty upset because going to the supercharger is gonna be a longer wait than you typically would if it didn't have the extra magic dock connectors there. Now, I'm not sure how Tesla is gonna deal with this exactly. Maybe there are some stalls that are dedicated to Tesla vehicles only, and then other stalls that are gonna be available to everyone, including Tesla owner. And of course, they're gonna be having to increase the quantity of it because it's already limited as it is right now. Now, another point that I do have to talk about is how non-Tesla EVs are gonna handle backing into the stalls. As you guys know that a lot of other vehicles out there do put the charging slots either up front of the vehicle, on the side of the vehicle, or at the back of the vehicle. So that means that it's gonna be a different ways to back in. And the Tesla supercharger cores are very short. That means that cars are gonna be taking up multiple stalls. They're gonna be going in horizontally. They're gonna be parking sideways. They're gonna be parking in multiple different ways just to get the charger to be connected. And there's nobody there to supervise the whole experience. So it's definitely gonna make the supercharging network a lot worse than it is right now. Overall, this is just my personal opinion, but I do think that they have to have some kind of monitoring software or at least somebody there watching over the whole thing just to make sure that they're not blocking up the stalls that normal Tesla EVs are able to charge from. Just from the looks of it right now, there are even ICE cars that are blocking the way and there's nobody doing anything about it. And then there are other EVs that are literally just parking there and not charging. And again, nobody is doing anything about that either. So yeah, before they open this up to a larger market like North America, they're gonna have to fix up these issues and then maybe work on the European side as well. Now this leads me on to another point and that is that the charging connectors itself in Europe overall just looks like this. It's big, it's ugly, but it works and every car uses the same connector. It's called the CCS, but in North American market, Tesla has just released their own charging standard and it's called the NACS, the North America Charging Standard. They opened this up for every manufacturer out there to use, but as of right now, no manufacturer other than Tesla is using it. If you take a look at this, it's a lot slimmer, it's a lot more lighter, and it's a lot sleeker overall, and it just works. You can just use one hand, you can plug it in, and that's pretty much it. It authenticates that your car is connected to a credit card, it talks to the supercharging network, it connects with your VIN, it talks to Tesla, and your charging set begins. Now all the manufacturers out there right now use a CCS just like in Europe with the exception for Tesla and of course Tesla opening up their charging network they're gonna have to make uh, some kind of sacrifice here and this is where the magic dock comes in. Alright so if you guys don't already know how the process works in Europe you essentially pull up your non Tesla EV up to the stall there's a stall number you enter it into the mobile app and then it starts authenticating and doing everything else as it usually does with the supercharging network and then it will start your charging session. Now with the exception being that the connectors are different, Tesla has worked on the Magic Dock and it looks just like this. It's a little bit bigger but you can choose between undocking it and making it a supercharging uh, typical NACS which you plug into your Tesla or you undock it again and you will get your typical CCS. 
So it's essentially an all-in-one connector. It's as if you bought a CCS adapter to plug it in your supercharging cord and left it on there at all times. So I think it's a pretty clever idea how Tesla's working with this issue right now and it's almost time that it's gonna be available. I think the first one is going to be in California as you guys can see here. If you guys search up the Hawthorne supercharger in California at this exact address, you can take a look at the bottom. It does say CCS compatibility. So what this indicates is that all non-Tesla EVs are gonna be able to come to this section and do what you're able to do back in Europe. Now, we don't know if this is a mistake, an early preview, or it's just accidental that CCS is just put up on the page. But at the moment right now, a lot of people are getting excited and Tesla Scope on Twitter actually came to the location on our behalf, checked out the site, and there is no CCS Magic Dock connector there at the moment. So maybe Tesla is in the process of setting it up right now and it's just not ready, or maybe this is just a mistake and they haven't figured out a way to get this Magic Dock to connector to work. But at the moment, Tesla is definitely ramping up the effort because of a federal incentive. They are getting government money to to work on superchargers or expanding the supercharging network, but only if it's beneficial to every single EV out there. So of course, this is gonna be something that Tesla's gonna be taking advantage of. Just like the rebate that Tesla vehicles are getting right now for Tesla owners of 7,500, if they pick up a vehicle within this threshold right now. So of course, Tesla went ahead and lowered their prices right underneath this threshold so everybody could take advantage of the rebate. So anyways, guys, this is a good indication that Tesla is going to be expanding this network. And if you guys aren't a Tesla fan and you have some other EV out there right now, uh, just wait a little bit longer if range is your issue right now or supercharging networks are your issue right now. I know the EA experience is not as good. So if you guys want a seamless experience but also use this Tesla supercharging network, you have two options. That's either get a Tesla or just wait a little bit longer and Tesla is gonna be making it CCS compatible. So there you guys have it, our first look within the Tesla mobile app of what it looks like right here. And I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little update. If you guys did, you know what to do. This is John once again. Peace out.